All right, legends, welcome back to Beers and Breakevens, reviewing round four, having a look at round five, joined by my 5'8", T-Rex, Tim Williams, Williams, comma, Tim, coach of the Kuma Ponies. How are we, mate? <laughs> fucking please, <laughs> my God. Can you hear that, mate? Oh, yeah, fucking, that sounds like a horse that's been relevant for one week. The hoo- Proceed. The hooves are pounding, mate. The stallions <laughs> are coming. You wait till I start to pick my 17, then you're all in deep curry. <laughs> How are we feeling, mate? What's doing? Heaps better than a week ago. Tell me about it. Yeah, yeah. you're flying. Yeah, yeah look, needed it. And yeah, uh, they're, they're, they're only uh, there are only so many weeks in a row that you can mention that you come 57k <laughs> and you're feeling all right about it that uh, you can get away with it. And uh, thankfully, we've bounced back. So I'm in a good mood. No, it was a good week for you, mate. And um, I don't like to give you compliments and I'm not going to like to give you this one. Uh, but you had a good week and I think um, I was actually watching your week from a distance and how good is it when something happens and you think, fuck, my weekend's completely screwed, Palace got ruled out. I thought this would be interesting to see how Timmy responds to this and honestly, that guy might be your low-key MVP because he's made your week. I had a big spiel on the, the play potty last night talking about you know, you, the highs and lows of Supercoach. And we, yeah. we say it often on, on this podcast that you're going to have your injuries, your HOAs, your suspensions, things that screw you. You do get lucky in the game as well. And Palacia, who when he got ruled out and I was down a front row, I just went, I had a boost lined up, had my train plan sorted out. And it just, I, as soon as I saw it, I just knew I went, this is going to change my plans dramatically. Oh, and I had, initially I was going to Levi to Appy Coruscant. And then I had to reverse that, fix up my front row. Palacy was going next week anyway, barring – he was getting held for a week because he was starting with Tino out and I wanted to see his minutes. But I just went, oh, what a drama. Uh, anyway, I ended up moving him to Josh Kerr. Kerr scored that late try, held Levi. He outscored Appy by 23 points. Mm. Uh, it worked out well, mate. And as I said, you do get uh, the rub of the green sometimes in this game. Shout out to all of you that traded uh, Levi to Lussick last week. Mm. Stoked for you. It's funny because I I was speaking to the spy on the podcast last week and I was saying that I was going Levi to Appy and I was happy to do it. Don't get me wrong, if I did it, it would have been okay, but it's worked out better. And I was hammering him to go Lussick to leave a uh, Lussick to Appy last week and Lussick got his third or whatever. I didn't end up doing it. He's this week looking at getting rid of last week. I'm like, oh, it's a funny game, this one. Yeah, it's funny how it all turns very yeah. quickly. Now, um, we have got a special guest joining us today, and I'm about to bring her in. And um, she's going to give me a lot of shit today, so I thought I'd get in with the first punch. Uh, we've got the Orange Wiggle joining us. How are you? <laughs> When you said you couldn't wait to intro me, I was really – I actually expected worse. Orange Wiggle. I had worse, but That's we'll, we'll proceed. I'll save I it did. for other times when you beat me throughout the year. Yeah, nice. I did walk past a tradie this morning and think, we do look a little similar. <laughs> I, could, I could do that. Yeah. I, there's, there's a bit of a resemblance there. How are you boys? Yeah, we're good. Now, we are, we're actually going to go through Kat's team a little bit later and um, there's a lot of context to give with Kat's team. I love it. Um, She's made one trade so far this year. Mm. It's fucking wild. Yeah, I have to talk through. You're going to see well and truly what an overthinker I am to the point where nothing gets done. See, when you told me you'd made one trade, I thought, oh, she's just underthinking it. She's, she's got a bit of Maddie the water boy mm. about it where she hasn't mm. opened her team. It's the complete opposite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the team's open regularly and I'm, and I'm often sitting watching the game, looking at the scores. I just – I haven't – I haven't uh, – it's, and it's not a lack of confidence. It's, I think, that fear of ruining or wasting mm. a trade and doing things too soon or like jumping the gun when I, I want to sit on things a bit longer. T- but- turns out she just started with with May, Kerr, Levi, Talungi, Galvin, <laughs> and she just hasn't had to trade. Hasn't had to trade, yeah. yeah. No, because when, when she told me this morning she made one trade, I was like, how does she have all these conversations with me every week? Mm. <laughs> not she's I not am. even looking at her team, but she's she, oh, you're, no. you're looking at it heaps. Yeah, I like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm across it. I'm I just... actually, it's actually going to make it really interesting for the show because she's going to have so many trades on the run home when that's probably going to be when teams are conceding 40 and 50. Mm. It could be a master strike. I, I told you in my rookie year of the other version of this game, mm. I also won because I held trades for ages. I just – look, I was also very lucky early on. I didn't cop too many injuries and I think that's the other thing. I look at my team now and you will see down the track in the episode that 
there are some players that need to go now, mm. but I was pretty lucky initially that I didn't have too many fires. Yeah, okay. So, And shout out to all the people that were in Kat's original comp. I hope their Labradors are doing well. <laughs> <laughs> They're blind, Kat. They're blind was, was, was the joke oh. there. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> you know it's good when you've got to explain it. <laughs> Always good. Now, now before we move off, actually, Katmandu. Mm. Um, where, yes. Now, me and Timmy, because, well, this year I'm on my debut year with the expert tag or whatever the hell it is, we actually can't see the leagues. We can see mm. 20 of them, but we can't see mm. specific ones. So we are actually in a in a super coach comp with the Hello Sport boys with the About Even group, so Sebo, Tom, Eddie, all the boys down there. And uh, Kat's going to give us a little weekly update as to how that comp's going because, yes. one, I'm interested, two, I can't see it, and three, I think people would like to know. Yeah, well, Sebo put in a pre-season shout-out saying he was coming for us on uh, on Instagram. So uh, as we don't know how we're going in that league. We don't know results. And I'm keen to see yeah, where the boys are. I, I'm, I'm interested that um, – that Tommy Birmingham's little Harley Smith Shields round one play, he's in the <laughs> side this week, so with a decent matchup. Mate, I'll get to it later, but I was sitting with Burmo on Thursday night watching the footy and he goes, fuck, I played Nathan Cleary. And I go, you idiot. Then I opened my phone and went, ah, so did I. <laughs> Good. Do, there's been two occasions this season that you've abandoned me, the first one <laughs> being in Vegas where you're away on the other side of the planet and you left Willison in your team and didn't mean to. The second one was about on the, the Hello Sport <laughs> live stream on Thursday night where I was meant to be on it with you, but I had to shoot off going away for Easter. And I get this message just saying, you left clear in your team. I'm just like, am I just going to have to hold your hand all weekend for the next 23 weeks? Mate, sure. Do whatever you want. But at the back end, I'll need that hand back to lift up the trophy for a third season in a row, okay? So talk it up. Do your thing. I'm, I'm just a humble draft guy just having a red hot crack. I'm, I'm just having a go out here taking on giants and just getting the job done. What's doing in the about even comp, Katmandu? Okay, so the current standings as the ladder shows is that mm. you, Guru, are coming second. Unders. Unders. Massive you've, unders. You've got a uh, six points out of a uh, potential eight, mm. so you've done pretty well there. You've only lost one of your head to heads. Please be first. Please be first. Timmy, the Kuma Stallions are in at fourth. Oh, <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, you have uh, won a total of three out of a potential four head to heads. You're also on six points though, so I think your current difference is your overall score. So that's kind of what's put yeah, uh, right, Guru okay. at second. Who, you, how did we go on the weekend? <laughs> I'm getting there. Go. I'm getting there. Hold, your, hold your horses, Kuma, Stallion. <laughs> uh, and then myself, we are sitting at a very lonely eighth. Uh, but it's okay because I'm in front of some big, big names in the <laughs> in the rugby hitters. league space. Oh, absolutely. I'm pretty proud of this. Um, and I've only won two. Uh, sorry, I've only got two points. I've only won one of my head-to-heads. Who's, who's below you? Name below me is Edward. <laughs> Pretender. Rando. Oh. Rando. I am better than the stats Please guy. God, don't tell me Tommy Birmingham slid his way into the eight. Surely. No, he's he's got to be last. last. No, he, he is at 11th. Thomas is at 11th. He's not last. No. Who's last? Oh, wait. There's Tom and Thomas. Oh. Wait, wait, what, what, what are the team names? There'll be some shit manly. Hines Hounds and Big Day Boys. He'll be Big Day Boys. Yeah. He's coming last. Shock me. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. That's yeah. so funny. How good? Okay, but then you, Timmy, you you alluded to what happened in mm. round four. Yeah, well, well the let me fill result. you in because I think you're going to like this one, but mm. I know who won't like this one once I find the uh, the scores. Wait, what did you score this week, Timmy? I went eleven hundred and twenty five points to to slide Guru into the top twenty seven k. Yeah, and Guru twenty six nine nine nine. What was your score this week? One thousand and nine. Just raised the yeah. bat by being so, stick. Hate to break it to you, you two were faced each other in the head-to-heads this week, which <laughs> yes. means that the Kuma Stallions have come out on top. You yeah, beauty. See, big game player, mate. J- just to be loud and clear, you're telling me that we played each other this week. I didn't pick a halfback. I was essentially tanking <laughs> and I'm still beating him on the ladder. Is, is that where we're at? I think that's what that means. You didn't pick a halfback and I knocked you off by 120 points, mate. That's the way this goes. Mate, Hacho's worth 140. <laughs> Yeah, no, well, credit to you, Timbo. Credit to where's, you. Uh, where's Sebo sitting on that, that ladder? Sebo, would he be South Coast Sharks? Is it coached by Seb? 
it's the coach is breaking. I don't know what that means. I don't know. Well, yeah, that's, that's breaking the yips. Yeah, that'll oh, be there you go. Yeah. He's first. Is he? Really? Yeah, he's coming first. Oh, for fuck's sake. He's no. won all of he's won for all of his head to heads. Uh, can, and can his you overall see score is three thousand nine hundred and sixty six. Oh, so he scored less points than us. Just jad a good draw. Yeah. Okay, yeah, your so your overall score is four thousand and forty two. Is that the most? Uh, no, what Warren is first at four thousand one hundred and ten. Fuck is Warren? I don't know, but I don't like him. Yeah, I don't like him either. <laughs> Jeez, that hurts. I was really confident going into that. All right, <laughs> about even league. Next week, I'll I'll come in with these stats all written down because I didn't know what. Yeah, to we we decided here. to do this eight seconds yeah. ago. So do, do we have cat? Uh, do we have the fixtures for next week up? No, no, yeah, need to rush, for for this round. Yeah, yeah. Who's yes, got who? I'll I'll get that for you. One second. Whilst we're doing that, we will just go through. So I scored 1,009. I'm currently ranked 14th thousandth. Uh, after going up 77,000 spots last week, I went down four this week. So that wasn't ideal. Timbo, where are we sitting? 1,125 points. Um, sitting comfortably in the top 27K in 26,999th. Nice. And Katmandu, while she's looking for that, Kat scored 1,027. Uh, turns out the Nathan Cleary play kind of cost me beating Kat this week, which isn't ideal. Yeah, that's But we move. Uh, We've Kat's, got – Sorry, mate, you go. No, you go. I was going to say you're 100 points on the dot ahead of me. Yeah. So th- it's about 13,000 spots is 100 points. Mm. And I think uh, Desi Creek's in about 3,000. I think he's about another 100 more ahead of you. So there's 200 points yeah. between 3,000 and 27K. So anyone out there panicking that might be, you know, 30,000, 50,000, 60,000, it can change so quick. Mm. Yeah, like honestly, I was a halfback away from probably being in the top 10 this week. Yeah. So. <laughs> Very unlucky. Wow. Um, Katmandu, so, 1,027, ranked 48,000. Uh, funnily enough, she's ranked 48,000. She's still got 48,000 trades left. Yeah, well, well played. So she's sitting in a say. good spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's great stuff from me, I think. Uh, it's it's all very much part of my strategy. She's blown out to 150 to 1 to win the minor premiership but also firmed into $1.40 to win the title. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking the head, it. The head title. I'm going to take it every day of the week. Oh, she's going to come home so yeah. strong. It's yeah. going to be painful. Yeah. The orange wiggle. Orange Regal. You wait. It'll be great. The head-to-head finals, the final month of the season when we're out of trades and Kat's got four boosts and 12 trades left. <laughs> I, rem- I remember people actually saying to me in the past over over this that that I needed to be aware that I couldn't carry trades into the next year. Next that's, year. that's how I approached this. So. Yeah, carry the one stuff. Yeah. It's just it's a different strategy to you guys. Call it call it a very cautious strategy, <laughs> but it's it definitely doesn't mean I don't know what I'm doing. No, no, for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm scared. I know exactly. That's why what I'm going to enjoy it now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm going to hate it at the end. So of the, the year. fixtures this week, the matchups: Guru Grizzlies. You're taking on Mean Machine, also known as Matt, not Maddie the Water Boy, another Matt in the About Even crew. Sure. Okay. And Kuma Stallions, you're taking on Thomas Heinz Hounds. Ah, uh, Thomas 2.0. Mm. Mm. Who would Thomas 2.0 be? I don't know. Is that Tobler? Surely. Is he Hines, Hounds? No, is he yeah, I don't know who it no, is. It, I th- no, I think it is Tobler because there's no other Tobler Tobler looking type of count in here. Yeah, Beautiful. right, okay. Seb, I'll shit the bed. You'll forget to pick half your team. You'll forget to pick a bench. I'll be into first place by the end of the week. I won't make any trades. Yeah, <laughs> you'll How still good. be late. All, All right. right, let's get into it, mate. Let's get into Team List Tuesday. Thursday, we've got the Melbourne Storm taking on the Bronx. Coming to you from Amy Park. Going to be a cracker for the Storm. Cam Munster at six, Hughes at seven, Bloor on the edge. Uh, no Chan. Very interesting hand injury. I'm getting a little bit sceptical. I got a bit of word before that that Chan might have potentially been on the outer a little bit. Well, I say on the outer, like from the starting team for the yep. Storm, all good and well. Um, and potentially they weren't uh, as convinced as super coaches were after he scored 50 odd. Um, then the hand infection came up, then they had to the buy, and now he's nowhere to be seen in the squad. So I don't know, but yeah. it doesn't sound good. Doesn't sound great, but <coughs> at least he's not in the squad. Much better. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's better. So we'll see with that. Not uh, naming Kick up or anything. You've you done your homework? I haven't done any homework it's on been that. A big, it's no been way. a big 24 hours. Been a huge 24 Easter hours. Easter weekend throwing things out of whack. Uh, Broncos, Sailor at fullback once again to cure it. Named on the bench. Uh, we have got Xavier Willison uh, out of this side. Copped a head knock at training the other day. So I would assume just missing the one week. 
hopefully back next week. If he's not, you will see a tantrum from me. So brace yourself <laughs> for that. Friday, 6 p.m., Bulldogs. I've got Bulldogs v. Bulldogs here. That's going to be an absolute <laughs> cracker. Bulldogs v. Roosters. Uh, Curran named on the edge. Sangster, I will come for you. Mm. If you try and pull any bullshit on us that says he's playing in the second row now, I'm going to lose my fucking mind. So brace yourself for that. Uh, Curran named on the edge. Edwards and Katoga on the bench. Know much about this Katoga cat? <laughs> nice guy. Nice guy. Love that. Real nice guy. I I would I'm hoping he starts this game on the edge and they bring Curran off the bench. If he doesn't start this game, surely he goes to the edge and Curran goes to the middle at some point, right? I would imagine so. I've only seen Katoga from uh trials. Yeah. Played on the edge, looked pretty devastating. Really excited to see him get a run. My guess would be Curran starts on the edge, yeah, Katoga comes on the edge and Curran probably goes to the middle, but he could also be spelled on the bench. But look, when you look at a bench of, I'm Kurt Mann's biggest fan, but smaller body in the middle, Kurt Mann, Harrison Edwards, Liam Knight, Sam Hughes, who's played a grand title of about 13 minutes this year, starting, I think they need Curran to spend time in the middle, don't they? Mate, you saw, um, saw Hughes play 12 minutes last week and Liam Knight played 13, so... We're going to need something from we, We're thinking gun to head, current 80 minutes across edge and middle. No, I don't think so. I reckon going to come off for a spell at some point. I reckon only do a short line. 65, yeah, 65, 70, I reckon. Take that. I, I, I'm not ruling out 80, but if you're putting the gun to the melon, <laughs> that's a lot, Tim. <laughs> you're putting a get, lot on the line. Real. Show would be nothing. All right, let's go to the Roosters. Lindsay Collins back in. Uh, Angus Crichton on the edge. I missed this in my team list Tuesday yesterday. That's an exciting little prospect, Timbo. What was that one, mate? Angus Crichton. <laughs> yeah, 409K. We're welcoming Tim Williams to the show once <laughs> no, again. No, I just didn't hear you, mate. Uh, 70-odd break even. Only played a handful of minutes last week, but came on. I thought he ran some some vintage lines. I'm very excited for Crichton. Um, obviously, you're not going to go early on him. Wouldn't go near him yet, but give me two weeks. Win down a big minute roll. Oh, boy, you could be a nice little downgrade. Watched him play uh, 80 minutes in New South Wales Cup a few weeks ago, and I understand it's New South Wales Cup, but my God, he looked damaging. So yeah. I'm expecting big things from him. Um, then we got the Knights Dragons late game on Friday night. Timmy Williams has informed me that it's meant to be torrential yeah. up there in Newcastle, which I hate to hear. Cogger at six, Hastings at seven. Shout out to my draft team. I need a five eight. So also looking at you, Sangster, I need Cogger to get dual position. Whether he deserves it or not, I don't <laughs> care. I need it. Give it to him. Give it to him. Uh, Leo Thompson returns in the front row. My God, they desperately needed Leo Thompson back in this side. Uh, for the Dragons, Eisenhuth named at 13. Harm Sally out of the side. Michael Molo back in. A bit harsh on Harm Sally, just quietly. Yeah. Not not happy enough. Mm. Is yeah. what it is with Supercoach. But, uh, mm. yeah, Eisenhuth at th back at 13. We'll see whether he actually starts there or not. But uh, even if he doesn't, I think he'll come on and play really good minutes. They the love what there. he's doing down there by the looks he's of unreal. it. So. Yeah. yeah, he feels like a flano dude. Mm. Uh, let's move to Super Saturday. We've got the Rabbitohs and the Waz, 3 p.m. out there at a core. For the Bunnies, Isaac Thompson comes on to the sting. Bad day to be named Jacob Gagai. For the New Zealand Warriors, uh, CNK at fullback. Tamaro Martin named at six. Interesting. I thought we'd get uh, Chanel. Shame for Supercoach. Mm. Yeah, Did you been check out Chanel's price or not? Yeah, he's very cheap, like 230 or something. 238K, I think he yeah. is. Um, and, yeah, and his dual position. So no, I'm I think he's just halfback, Chanel. Just halfback, yep. yeah. Yeah. 234K, scored 49 in 70 minutes on the weekend coming on uh, for Metcalf. Yeah, it's a real shame, Supercoach, because he's got plenty of ability. Could yeah. have been a, a genuine option despite being just halfback. Yeah, for sure. Anyway. Uh, well, especially with the state of halfback at the moment. Yeah. Uh, Nair Corre also comes in on the edge for Cody Capewell. Not sure what is doing there. Uh, Manly v Penrith, 5.30 p.m. from Brookie Oval. Manly, they are 1-17 to there for the Penny Panthers. James Fisher-Harris returns, Liam Martin named. Uh, I think the big one with Fisher-Harris, mate, is how it affects Liam Henry. A lot of people went him last week. Mm. I still think he'll, he'll be a good buy for I was going to buy him this week if Fish wasn't there, but I think with Fish back, I might let Liam Henry go. Yeah, the last full 
game they played together was round one. Uh, Fish, sorry, Henry in that game played 34 minutes, 36 points, 36 in base. Minus Scotty Sorensen, which really is playing on the edge, doesn't really change that middle rotation much. If he's only getting 35 minutes, sure, he'll turn out good base, but you need him. It's a concern. Like, next seven break him, so there's more money to come. Yeah. But, like, he rose 50-odd K last week. I think if you had him last week, you got his gold, you're happy. And even if you own him, like, he's, he probably is your second front row forward or, like, at the very least reserve front row forward that you can play yeah. if you need to and you're happy. I just don't think he's a, a buy with Fishback. Yeah, I agree. I, I wouldn't be. I won't be buying no. him. Uh, we have got the Finn and the Tigers going head to head at seven thirty p.m. Uh, for the Finn. Uh, we had Stone come back in in the jersey thirteen with Maxi Plath out. Uh, K. Brom returns on the bench for the Tigers. Bud Sullivan at five eight. Latu makes his debut uh, coming off the bench. Another interesting watch there. Anything to touch on with those games, mate? Um. Tigers, no. Dolphins, no. Not much doing. <laughs> Sunday, Cowboys and the Titans. Cows, 1-17 to 17 for the Titans. Oh, boy. Harley Smith-Shields and Jojo come onto the wing. Shout out to Jojo. We called for him on Bloke in a Bar yesterday. We, th- we thought we'd have to put him on the side of a milk cart and we hadn't heard from him <laughs> in a while. He's back on the wing. Uh, Sami and uh, Campiera out. Fafita named on the bench. Uh, the debut of Josiah Pahulu, who I think could become a little bit relevant in Supercoach, mate, uh, with the middles missing, kid with upside, a forward pack that's essentially going backwards. Mm. I wouldn't be surprised if he comes on and uh, shows a little bit, a little bit of enthusiasm and earns, you know, a decent 30, 40-minute roll over the next few weeks. I would love nothing more than for him to earn a 30 to 40-minute roll, pop a few offloads, bust a couple of tackles and move on Farmer Steely to him. It would be absolutely wonderful. I am so glad I don't own Farmer Silly. Yeah. Uh, Raiders versus Eels, 6.15 in the nation's capital for the Durs. Adam Mariota on the edge. Simi Sasagi named on the bench. Shout out to Simi Sasagi. Made the move down the Canberra. Turned himself into a back row. A great to see him in first grade. Did really well for Newtown on the weekend. Uh, what do we make of Ata Mariota? Are we buying it or not? Or is this a bit of Ricky Stewart shit fuckery? Um, yeah, seems like a bit of a shit show. I don't – like Mariota – to my knowledge, he's just an out-and-out middle forward. You've got Corey Horsburgh, who 12, maybe 20, probably 24 months ago, he started the season as an edge-back rower. Mm. They tried to move him out there and play him big minutes. Uh, you've also got Sasagi, who, as you said, has been playing edge in cup. So, look, I would think that Horsburgh or Sasagi starts on the edge of Mariota, goes to the bench and plays through the middle. But been wrong before and it could be wrong again. Yeah, it's a bit hard to tell with uh, Ricky. Uh, I think they did play Horsburgh on the edge for a couple of games last year too. Yeah. I owned him in draft. I think they, he played two or three games out there. Yeah. Just got a try, I think, in one of them or something. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the Parramatta Eels, Ryan Madison named on the edge. Widamu Greg comes onto the bench. I'm surprised it's taken this long to see Widamu Greg. I thought he was really good last year. Uh, mm. But, yeah, Ryan Madison comes in there to replace the injured Bryce Carrot, who was out last week. Um, I think people were hoping for Kelmer. Matto becomes interesting. He does, except Cardi's – hasn't that been weird? Like, yeah. Rizzi said six to eight weeks or whatever. Then he got named last week and then – not named this week. They said he was a week to week proposition. So, yeah. look, when he's fit, he comes back in and starts. So, Matto, he's such a good super coach player, but Brad Arthur can screw him over and play him ridiculous minutes. So, he just – if he was locked into like 60, 65 each and every week, I'd just buy him and n- near set and forget him for the season. But something always goes wrong with him. I'll tell you, if I if I could draw up my ideal situation for Supercoach right now, it would be that Parramatta trade Ryan Madison to the Dragons for Zach Lomax. Lomax lands on the Parramatta wing mm. and you see uh, fucking Ryan Madison locked down a role for the Dragons. Then I'd buy both. You would straight away. Yeah, that'd be fucking perfect. And I reckon it'd be a decent trade for both of them to be unreal. Mm. All right, Blue Wealth Property, our sponsors for this season. They have got an event tonight, Wednesday the 3rd of April, which is tonight. Buying a property through your super, that's live via the webinar. So it is a 7 p.m. kickoff. Uh, So if you're not able to get there, you can do that via webinar there. Buying a property through your super. Learn about how many many Aussies are starting to invest in property via their super. The link is in the description below, so check it out. And then Wednesday... 
the 1st of May. How to pay off your mortgage with an investment property. This one's live at Sydney Olympic Park, also via the webinar, 6.30 p.m. in the room, 7 p.m. online. They give you that half an hour barrier so that uh, the great and powerful Mort's and Tony can tell you about their super coach side in that 30 minute slot. Mm. What do you reckon to be the <laughs> spiel at the moment? Yeah. So, how to pay off your mortgage with an investment property? I remember sitting down with uh, Mort and Tony about 12 months ago and chatting uh, about this, not from personal circumstances, but just out of curiosity. And they mentioned that I asked them the question because they were saying if you do own a property, you can take out of it and buy another one said a lot of people can do it. I said, what percentage of people that of current property owners do you think are in a position to buy another one with their – I cannot think of the word because I'm uh, – Super. Not super. Taking from your current – Like your capital. Capital, some capital, something like that. Equity. Uh, equity. Equity. Lucky I'm here. Yeah, thanks, Kat. Yeah, I would not have come up with yeah, that. That's I'm good. glad you got there because we could have been going for a while. <laughs> uh, using equity from your current property to buy another one, 80% of – Current homeowners, they reckon, were in a position to buy another property. There you yeah, go. Wow, eighty percent. So, I blew my mind, and that's why I remember the stat. Not so much the wording. But not so much the word, but the stat's yeah. a good one. It's, it's really so. Out to it's me. true though. There's so <clears throat> much to learn about that process because you think it's buying the second property is very different to buying the first because mm. you obviously have a mm. lot more pull now that you have something. So. so both, Do your research. Yeah, Reach both out great to Blue ones, World. but that Wednesday, the 1st of May, you will be tuning into that one. Yeah, I might have to tune into that one too, just quietly. But yeah, shout out to the Blue Wealth Property team. Uh, all the links are in the description, guys, of the podcast, YouTube, whatever it might be. Uh, so make sure you go and check that out. All right. <clears throat> Timbo's Stats Deep Dive, Dive, Dive. <laughs> <laughs> All right. First one, Justin Olam, one of the most traded in players this week, in negative 40 break even. Just expanding on some stats I spoke about on the Playbook podcast last night. Uh, preface by saying with that break even and the way he's looking, not a bad buy because there's good money in coming no matter which way it goes for him. But just want to say that historically – He's not been a sort of relevant super coach scorer. In 2023, he had 15 games for the Storm. He had one score over 54 points. 12 scores in 15 games were sub 50, and he based 26, which is okay at best for a, for a CT dub. Head back to 2022, again, a very strong Storm outfit. 23 games, also based 26. In his 23 games, he had 14 scores that were sub 50 points. Of his 23 games, 10 of his scores were sub 40 points. So I'm not knocking the buy because I could never knock a buy on someone like that with a break even with Neg 40 because there's money incoming. If he comes out and finds more attack, you know, there could be two 250K potentially, but there is a very realistic chance that he's being sold in two weeks' time. Yeah, I'm going to knock it. I think he is being sold in two weeks' time. I don't like the move. Um, Timmy just read out all of his stats in Melbourne. Keep in mind, that's on a Cam Munster edge. Mm. I mean, can't get all that much. At a, that, let's really. call it what it is. I know the Tigers had a, a great win on the weekend and the week before, a significantly stronger outfit. Yeah, and over the next two weeks, like with all due respect to those to the boys that are coming in, like without Galvin, they're going to be a different footy side. Mm. He is a, he's he's right up there with the best five eights in the game based on our small sample size we've got this season. Yeah. So, yeah, not for me. Uh, Curran, talk to me. So I've just got. Um, his stats from 80-minute games on the edge last year. And as you said, Guru, I'm probably with you. I think he plays 65 to 70 minutes. Yep. I think he lobs around that. But in 80 minutes last year on the edge for the Warriors, he had 68.75 points, 56 in base in that time. So same what we already know, but just you know, um, doubling down on the edge, big minutes. Josh Curran with hopeful front row forward dual positioning coming in. I don't need to buy him this week. I'd be waiting and seeing what happens with the jewel and if he gets it. But <clears throat> we keep talking about how we're all battling at front row forward. Jeez, he's going to solve some headaches if he gets it. We can just shift him up to front row. And just keep an eye on this week too. Hacho gets the ball, shows under, looks long, plays shorts, puts current over. Guru's Grizzlies collects about 300 points <laughs> in eight seconds. 
<laughs> watch this space. Captaining Hacho. Might do. <laughs> Don't rule it out. Uh, but, yeah, going to be an interesting watch there with Josh Curran. Surely he gets dual position. Um, Isaiah Yo, Mr. 70. Week in, week out. There's a couple Bad of day will get you 68. Good day will get you 72. There's two players coming up that I was just scrolling through some stats last night going, they do it every, not every year, but so consistent. And Isaiah Yo, he's averaging 76, 58 in base. His last four scores, 67, 94, 69, 72. 744K, 78 minutes per game. Attacking upside. That is so good going. We never mentioned him. Oh, mate, I, I played him in draft last week and he was the first name on the list and I went, eh, okay, sweet. Yeah. Moved on. Then I'm sitting there watching the game going, my God, can this motherfucker have a rest? Just chill. He just does everything. And it, and the amount of things he does that you get no points for in Supercoach too mm. is just outrageous. Like if there was just a good footballer stat, he'd be flying. Yeah, He's a freak. Um, oh, Jermaine Osako, talk to me. I didn't want to do this, I didn't want to do this but I, I did feel obliged, especially off the back of – Kerr, Hammer and Bostock just going ham for me last week. I do owe it to the Dolphins. They, they have, uh, they've looked after me. Jermaine Asako, you sit there and go, oh, Dolphins have been solid enough this season. Had a buy there. Asako, not quiet, but going okay. He's averaging 77. That's fucked. 34 in base per game. He's only had one try and one assist. He's had two line breaks for the season. So no, like, not a bundle of attacking stats for a winger. <clears throat> Pardon me. On the weekend, he had nine tackle breaks and 24 runs. God, just keeps doing it. He just keeps doing the damn thing. Shout out to you if you had Osaka. Mm. Credit to you. Uh, now, this is a guy that I brought in my draft team this week, and boy, oh boy, was I happy. He's going great. Got him off the, the wire. Yeah, the put him off the waiver wire. Then we got to game day. Yeah. I have Burbo and Eisenhuth. Burbo starting Eisenhuth bench, and I went... No, I've seen enough super coach in my day to know that Eisenhuth's the play here. <laughs> Got a few texts from the boys in the comp. What are you doing? That's crazy. 79 points. Thanks for Thank coming. Thank you. Cheers. Did you manage to see how many tackle breaks he had on the weekend? Um, I would guess it would be in the range of eight. <laughs> nine. Nine, yeah. He was ever. Tom out. Eisenhuth had nine tackle breaks in the middle. <clears throat> More stats. Averaging 55 points this season. 49 minutes per game. In 49 minutes per game, he's averaging 44 in base. His dual position to our FCT dub. As I said, we don't – like he probably doesn't start this week is the uh, issue. Like he's been named to, but I'll say he won't, but he didn't last week. He got moved. Yeah, I reckon he is a chance to start. And if he doesn't, he played 45 minutes on the weekend. I reckon he'll play 55 to 60. He's too important to the side. 45 minutes, 45 in base on the weekend. The week before was 54 minutes for 48 in base. Like, look, I'm not going to buy him at that price and I want more high upside CT dubs certainly, but for anyone who did jump, like he's earned 75K, it's not too late, but good luck if you did. You could do heaps worse. Christ, you could do heaps worse. Um, now, I've thrown a little one in here that I want to ask you about. Now, did now I thought I threw this in before and then it disappeared off the sheet. Did you take it out for a reason or not? Oh, I just deleted all my ones. I thought they were all from last week. Okay, so, sweet. Yeah. Good. Okay. <coughs> so, this week, um, I came in here today thinking about my trades, thinking I don't want to use a boost, and then thinking it's probably for the best I don't use a boost. Then I said to Timmy, you, would you be happy to use a boost this week? He said yes. So, now I'm petrified of what I'm capable of doing this yeah. weekend and what monstrosities I could cause. But I've got three outside backs, Timmy. Three CDWs that I want to talk to you about. Uh, Taylor May, Xavier Savage, Burbo. Um, I'm sort of leaning towards trading two of them this week. My question to you, which of those two would you be trading? I think the obvious one for me is Burbo. Playing 50 minutes, I said it last week, I'm worried it, I just – he, he actually started the game really well. He had five yeah. hit-ups in his first 20 minutes. He was everywhere, 50th minute, early shower. Thanks for coming. Taylor May is the most trade-out player this week, and I can't believe it. I just <clears> – pardon me, the old throat's on the way out. Um, it's been very circumstantial, his poor scoring this season. The two games yeah. against Parramatta, Brisbane, their injuries to the back line – they both had to put back rolls at centre. It was on the other side of the field. Penrith threw Tungo and Cleary exploited it and went nuts. 
on the weekend, not as good for Taylor, obviously, but you're a bloke. So Penrith are going to run into some easier games coming up. He's so cheap. He's in the best team in the comp. I just don't see him as a headache. I know he hasn't scored that well, but I don't have an issue with him. Look, if in two weeks' time he scores 30-30 again, sweet, but I just really don't think he will. We seen we saw the first couple of games of the season, he was busting tackles, offloading, looked terrific. I'm happy with him. <clears throat> I know that you've got a war chest of cash. Mm. If you didn't, I would say I'd probably sell Savage because he's, what, over 100K cheaper than Burbo. Burbo, I have no knocking people selling, particularly if they're going to blaze Tulungi. Yep. But, look, he's got that real handy dual 2RF CT dub, two tough games coming up for Manly, Panthers and the Warriors. I'm just like, his break even is, I think, 37. Do... I'm not keen to play him in my 17 while he's playing these lesser minutes, but could he become an 80-minute back row at any given week? Potentially he could, maybe that's optimistic. At the price, I just don't see him as a major, major issue. Savage is the one that, look, got 60 on the weekend. He had 19 in base. He had 16 in base three weeks ago <clears throat> with a try. I'd be tempted, as I said, because you've got money, mm. you probably cut Burbo. How much have you got in the bank? Some stupid amount, half a mil or something? Uh, well, before <laughs> trades this week, I've got 660K. But once yeah. once I do the trades, I'm thinking I'll have close to a mil. There you go. That's absurd. So you don't need that 100K really yeah. from, from Burbo. So I'd probably sell Burbo if I was you. If there's anyone in a similar situation with Savage and Burbo, I'd probably get rid of Savage and get that extra 110, 120-odd K. What are you leaning towards? Uh, yeah, I am I don't disagree with you on Taylor May. I'll start there. But I do think that there's a lot of people out there that haven't found themselves in as good a boat, cheapy-wise, as we have, mate. You've made a lot of money over the last – especially last week through mm. your Dolphins. Like we bo- we've both got Jack, Jack Bostock. That makes a huge difference. Uh, we both – well, I have Savage. You had Torpiki who did okay for you. Um, I think there's a lot of people out there that – would be struggling. People that had your Jacob Gagai's, your Salmons, these sort of guys mm. that oh, I can understand people moving off Taylor May if you're in a world of hurt. <clears throat> I would trade Taylor May to Blaze Tulungi if he's your only option to get to him and that's it. Yeah, okay. What are you leaning towards? I am leaning towards Savage or probably Savage and Burbo I'm going to trade. I'm thinking I'm going to move them to Blaze and then <laughs> I am considering going – I've already got Val Holmes. I'm considering leaning in heavily and going Murray Tolongi, <laughs> grabbing both on that edge and just I, – I think that the Cowboys are starting to look a little bit like flat trackers to me. Loves a combination this point. Loves a combination, yes. Uh, and believe me, I came in here today, I said to Kat – Fuck it. I'm going to bring in drink water and Murray Tulungi this week. I'm starting to cool on that. Not as much as I would have thought I would have been, but I'm I'm also looking at a potential Ryan Pappenhausen trade too over the next few weeks. By over the next few weeks, I mean in the next two days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For those playing at home. Um, my issue with Tulungi... Yeah, he averaged 52 last year. Cowboys went great. 55 the year before. <sighs> is the right wing at the Cowboys better? I mean, firstly, because... I don't they... think it is this year. I've been watching them very closely because I've got so many of them in my fucking draft team, including Kyle Felt. Mate, they're going left to Val Holmes all day because they're not using Val Holmes as a decoy anymore. Mm. Look at Mario Tolongi so far this year. 101, 35, 64, 57. Like, he scored 57 on the weekend without a try. I think they're going left a lot more, and I think they're using the left side. I think they're they're using the left side completely differently because mm. they're um, trying to get Val Ball. Yeah, trying to get Val Ball instead of using him as a decoy. I don't mind the play. I just think, firstly, Val runs like a bat out of hell and often runs like a hard line, which doesn't necessarily help Tao Lungi. Drinkwater's best ball playing is still left to right, hitting that right winger, and I still think they're going to use that a lot. Haven't yet. Well, like they literally haven't. 
I watch it every week, draft wise. Like, like Kyle Feltz scored. Feltz scored two. He set one up on the weekend with the line. Oh, not on the weekend. He scored scored two, set one up, night round two. Yeah. I haven't seen enough to say that they're not going to stop hitting the right edge. <clears throat> mm, yeah, I, I don't think they're hitting it as much as people are assuming they are. Um, I, and look, I'm more than happy to admit as well, because I've got Val, it obviously makes me lean towards that side because I like to have those combos. Uh, but yeah, something I'm considering there, I was going to bring Drink in at fullback. I'm now kind of looking at Ryan Pappenhausen, a bit more cash to generate mm. there, and I don't mind his draw over the next few weeks, Pappy. Any concern with the cows? This weekend, the matchup's fantastic. Yep. Titans could obliterate and they could all bloody ton up. Eels at Combank after, Sharkies in, at Shark Park, into Penrith. Three far tougher games after that. Far tougher, but not terrible. The Penrith game really worries me, of course, 100%. That's at the least it's away, in North though. Queensland. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the Shark is in Parramatta game. It doesn't concern me. Like, it's not the Gold Coast Titans. It yeah. doesn't concern me too much. But then you look at the two weeks after that, they then go Dolphins, Titans, Rabbitohs, West Tigers, which has me very interested. Mm. And a guy like Murray Tulungi, like, it doesn't mean I'll play him every week. Mm. Might just be a pick and choose. When I use him, sort of thing. Well, yeah, you could sit him for the for the Penrith game. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's what I'm looking at at the moment. Looking to go a little bit left field as I do. Throw to cat while I fill up my water bottle. Yeah. How are we, cat? Yeah, really good. Just panicking a little bit over all the options there are for my team, which is exciting because we're actually going to go through my team. Yeah. Well, we might um we might sort of just read through your side. Now we are going to. Put it on the screen, I believe. Yeah, we can do that. Put it on the screen as we go. But uh, Kat's side as it stands right now at Hooker, she's got Appy and Danny Levi. So you've actually done yeah, I'm happy really well there, to be fair. Front row forwards. Ruben Cotter, May, Hughes, Fafita. Fafita's not playing, so it gives a fuck. Yeah. Hughes, same issue as everyone else. But you've got your two starting front row forwards, so it doesn't really matter as much. Um, You've then got Sean Lane Smithies. You've got Ben Travojevic in your two RF, which we'll yeah. talk about in a minute. Yeah. Um, you've got Curran. You've still got Wong. I'm going to take a little bit of responsibility for that. And then you've got Joe Chan <laughs> as well. Uh, halfbacks, you've got Hines and Cleary, which is an interesting debate this week, which I feel very passionate on. You then 5'8, you've got Dill Brown and Ethan Strain. So you're sweet there. I mean, Dill Brown's not killing the, killing it, but everyone's it no 5'8s really yeah, are. It's fine for now. CTW, Savage. Roger Tuavasa Schnack, who only got 58 on the weekend by some form of miracle. I felt <laughs> very – you deserve better for that, cut. Taylor May, Jamin Salmon, Bostock, Topiki, Gagai, and then your fullbacks are Turbo and Callum Ponga. I cannot believe she's only made one trade, to be honest with you, Timmy. This team's actually looking – Who was your trade? Was it Appy? No, I had Appy from Appy. the start. Was I it? actually can't remember who I – who did I get? Who would you have brought in? It was that long ago. Was it Curran? Or did you yeah, start? I think I know. I traded Curran in. Yeah, right. But who did I get rid of? I don't even remember. Let me go back. It's wild that it wasn't Wong. Um, <laughs> actually, sitting in a pretty decent spot here, I think. It's a good looking. Considering game. she can boost this week, which will leave her with forty-one trades left. Um, the guys that I'd be looking at, Kat, and I'm keen to hear what Timmy thinks. But I think Gagai Topiki. Um, should be the first to go. I'd be moving them to a Blaze Talungi um, and someone else in the CTWs. I think also probably to free up some cash. She's only got 100K cash there, Timbo. Uh, 140. 100, 140. Yeah. You didn't – I mean, hard to knock this because you're going well, but no Galvin last week? No, I didn't jump on the Galvin. But it's worked out okay for her. He's suspended. She's got two weeks to buy him. It's fucking unbelievable. It, it has worked out well. Yeah. I mean, like he just made a ton of – he just made how much? He it made 110K, so probably yeah. should lock that one in. But with the suspension, it's like, okay, it's not the end of the world. You can wait two weeks to do it. Yeah, yes, you have missed out on 100K there, but you can wait two weeks. And yeah. that's the beauty, Kat. You've got Ethan Strange at eight, your 5'8", who you can move down to CTW, so you can even wait two weeks. Strange mm. to Galvin in two weeks. Lock, pl- Put that in your planner. Yeah. Lock it in. Or you could move Strange down. Yeah, yeah, you, you got options there. Um, Blaze Talangi obviously has to come into this side, I think, Timbo. Yep, get Talangi in for <laughs> Gagai. Yeah. Cannot get a run, can he? Yeah, I've... probably Gagai or Torpiki, either or. I, I think I'd go Torpiki just to free up some more cash for yeah. him to play with. Yeah. You can move Gagai whenever the fuck you want, realistically. Yeah, yeah. Um, then we've got... Gagai's also probably... 
maybe only one more injury away from getting back in as well. So yeah, well, I mean, we keep saying that, but Ty Munro will be back soon. True, so he's, true. Yeah, I I don't think we see Gago again this year. Yeah. I hope I'm wrong, but that's not looking great. Um, and then I would, Timmy, I'd be moving on Wong. I'm not sure who to. Maybe like a Kai Pierce Paul. Might be an option there. I just think to free up some more cash for us so she can start to splash a I little bit. Wong, Wong to Kai Pierce, Paul, lock that in. Tor picky to Talangi. And then having only used one trade, I'd be looking to boost somewhere. You know what? The more I look at it, I'm not actually sure where she should boost though. Yeah. I'm starting to wonder if maybe she should squirrel another nah, one away. I'd go, you should have a bit of cash in the bank following that. And I'd be looking to go Savage. And I'd be looking to go Salmon to strengthen your CT dub. I'd be getting a good CT dub in there. It's is, a really well-rounded team after that. Is there a world where Kat could move Ethan Strange to her CTWs and maybe sell Jamin Salmon to Galvin now to free up a bit more cash to make moves over the next two weeks? Oh, spicy. Uh, could. The only issue is, and again, I know I'm, I'm a little bit cautious with this, but if anything happens to Brown this week, you're down to 5'8 next week and have to cop an AE. Would you be you tempted, Cat, to trade Cleary? 883K. Mm. He's missing the next two weeks. Could you get a half back in? Sean Johnson, maybe? <sighs> Look, it, it is tempting because I've obviously got no half backs. It's a lot right of money now. there. Like, you're probably taking a, an AE of, I mean, no for feeders helps. I mean, I'd rather sell Cleary and invest that money in a property if I'm honest. My, <laughs> my argument to people, Kat, with these two, if you're in this situation, if you've traded this year, is to <laughs> honestly hold these two for the next mm. two weeks or so. Yeah. Like I, you say Sean Johnson, I'm so far from fucking confident Sean Johnson's going to score well over the next few weeks. It's just going to be two trades you're going to have to use to yeah. get back in there. You're in a different situation because you've got trades yeah. falling out of your fucking skyrocket. You yeah, can do whatever at, you want. But, but at the same time, I – Feel like it's a. Remember the overthinker. I I don't think selling Cleary is a good idea. Yeah, no, that's fine. I, I think don't think I, it's a bad it's, idea for you. I just think I will, but I don't like the Sean idea Johnson, that I sell him and then in a few weeks I buy him back. Like, Sean that's, Johnson's next month. Bunny's manly like meh. Dragons Titans. He's six sixty two k, averaging fifty four. Got to remember, he's only kicked like two or three goals this season. Mm. He gets charmed back, which is massive for him. Yeah, it's not a bad point, actually. A lot changes there. I'll pencil in the potential trade. And we'll With your trades, if you were to free up a few hundred K, you could cause you could cause absolute havoc and still have three more trades than us in three weeks time. Mm. I, I don't I don't hate the the cleary cleary to SJ, Torpicky down to Talangi. And then Wong down to KPP. Well, yeah, I've, like written, I've written these things down. <laughs> no I'm doubt. making notes. Kat, my last bone I want to pick with you. Oh, no. And I don't want to be rude. Mm. But Tim, it shits me beyond belief to see Ben Trevojevic in the 2RF. I've got him there as well. Oh, what the fuck <laughs> are you two doing? No, the, it was, I did do it to get – I went town Lolo to Galvin last week. Okay, so trades forced him to be in there. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. It was all like jewel related shit. Not the same. <laughs> yeah, not, not the, the same. same. Um, but yes, I would say, Kat, the other thing, <laughs> if you do want to hold Cleary and Hines and cop the NAE NA this week, firstly, you've between like Fafida, Chan, as it stands, Wong, Cleary, Torpiki, Gagai, your AE is not necessarily going to be that bad. So if you need to cop it this week, it's, it's not too bad. I do think you just need a straight – you need to get one more gun into your CT dump yeah. for sure. So I agree with that. I think if you do want to hold Cleary, I'd be going Salmon to take your pick. How many, how many points do you scored overall? Like if um, you go to your home screen, what are we looking at? Let me have a look. One second. Total score, 3,839. She's not that far off. No, she's going right. She's going right. Actually in a good spot. <laughs> you look – is that some sweat I see dripping on? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. I love that. <laughs> All right. Should we uh, run it home with our captains? Yeah, I'll touch on my trades as well because yep. I've got one for you, Ruins. Uh, I'm thinking. I was saying Ruins. <laughs> <laughs> um, what were they? So, Pia Kura to Kai Pierce Paul said last week that I was probably doing that. Here we are. Yep. Tor Picky to Blaze Talangi. 
all good. That leaves me 450K in the bank. Hard to argue either of those two, I think. <laughs> the boost option. Do I go Jesse Arthurs to Josiah Manu? And get real aggressive. He scored 63 or 4 or something against the Panthers on the weekend. Had that absurd no try been allowed, he would have been close to a ton against them. He looks unreal. He looks fit, strong, all good. He had, I can't remember if it was 9 or 11, I think he might have had 11 tackle busts on the weekend against the Panthers. He had 11 tackle busts against the Panthers. That was not including he would have had another two or three from his try. It would have been about 14. You know what I love about Joey Manu? Mm. And this is more so from a content point of view. Mm. He fucks your season every year. <laughs> he either goes great for me or shits the bed for you oh, and no. it's one or the other. And honestly, you, I don't know which way is the better way to go, but I'm happy for you just to go anywhere near it because yeah. I'm confident it somehow screws you over and it's going to be hilarious. Oh, no. So do whatever you want. Buy him, captain him. Give a fuck. It's too, yeah. Is he your Achilles heel? Two years he? ago, sold. It's the biggest curse I've ever seen. It's yeah. unbelievable. Two years ago, sold him for like one or two weeks or something. There, I'm not going to get into it. There's logic behind it. And I got Tyo who went nuts, but and he went put up 180 on the dragon. Yeah, I was sitting on my fat ass him. in a pub and off the top of my head just went, I might captain him. Yeah. And he scored 180 and he didn't have him. Then last year, him. last year I bought him in back into the season. Pretty well along with Cole, I decided our race brought him in. Captained him, did his hammy seven minutes into a game against the Tigers. They were going to win 50 nil. So that good. was wonderful. <laughs> and uh, I took it off drink water. It was five minutes before kickoff, and I took it off drink water, who turned up, I think. Oh, that's um, good times. Who do aside? Joe Manu. Who do aside? It haunts you, mate. <laughs> no, no. What, I dare you to put it aside. No, for you. What are you, what are your thoughts on Joe Manu? No, I've never. Uh, no, nah, I'm not. I'm not looking at him yet. I'm, I'm happy to sit and wait a few weeks, but I'm happy with my CTWs at the moment. Um, you can't get all the guns. I'm happy sitting with Val Holmes at the moment. Um, I don't need you to buy him. I mean, for me to buy him. I don't. Give, I don't care what you do. Well, you're CTW. I worry. Cool. I worry about me. Okay. <sighs> I worry about me. I listen to the beers and break heavens listeners who are trying to help, mate. Oh, I don't think please. selfishly. Um, it's a loser's mentality. Um, <laughs> I I don't mind it. I I don't know. I'm never as huge on Joey Manu as other people. But he is looking incredible. There's no doubt about it. Joey he looks, looks cool. heaps better than I thought he would this year. Maybe there's legs in it. I just I just find him a frustrating footballer yeah. at times. I find him so frustrating. I think if people out there, if you brought Dom Young last week, I think that's going to bite you in the ass. But maybe that it's a little bit more well appealing. Yeah. I, yeah. So far. Isn't it funny what a big him, score Tim? does to no, people? No. Isn't it funny what just a big score does to people? They just mm. lose all rationale yeah. and just go nuts. The amount of measures I'm getting about Labour this week, I'm like, fuck, it's one big score in round one. Yeah, I think there'll be a few, one, at least one Labour question in our late Oh, without a doubt they episode. will be. Took on Tessie New who had his concrete boots on that day. Oh, very tough. Um, oh, yeah. I, I don't, it's not for me, the Joey Manu play, but I, I understand why. He, he's scoring well. The eye test is there. I just, yeah, I'm looking elsewhere. I said, said at the start of the year, I was just going to just, again, yeah, always back the gut, but just get a little bit more aggressive this year and say, you know what, screw it, go with it. Uh, I did it with Hammer to start the year. He's averaging 95. It was a, it was a gut feel. Yep. And there's a few little butterflies around Joey Manu as well. It's interesting about Joe Marnie, like, well, I, I don't know, like I can only talk about our, our conversations. This is the first time I think we've said his name this year. Mm. We did top four CT Dub rankings one week ago on the Playbook podcast and I don't believe any of us had Manu in there. I wouldn't have had him in there. But when you come out and you stand up Taylor May one-on-one that easily and you have an 11 tackle bus against the Panthers – it reminds you of what the bloke can do very yeah, for quickly. Sure. Yeah. Who who were your top four CTWs? Feels like Remember? an age ago, doesn't it? I think Val was number one. Yeah. Uh, I think I had two of us a Sheck in mine. Yeah. Surely, had... surely Burbo was in there. <laughs> he was in your two's top four to our I was going to say. <laughs> uh, I think I had Marju lined up for like – we were talking like who we were aiming at getting in and I had Marju just like – in a month's time when he gets back, I'm still very keen on him. Lomax get a bait? 
not in mine. He was in Desi's. Yeah. Might have been linking around the spires, but just dragons attacking upside and there. Yep. Um, who was my other one? I don't even remember. Was Osako in there? No, Osako wasn't in there. No. But was Hamiso? Did you already say him? Hamiso was not in there. Interesting. Let me find it. Um, yeah. Okay. Sweet. Uh, let's do captains this week, mate. I was very interested in Kalen Ponga this week. I love that he's going to have Hastings and Cogger mm. in that side. Uh, two guys that their entire job is just give good seed to Kalen Ponga. Yep. Love that. Uh, but as you mentioned before, looks like we're going to get a little bit of rain. Uh, cats and dogs stuff. Over there, cat, old man snoring, you might say. Oh, do you think this is something that the that the Newey boys are just not, they can't cope with? I just think I don't like captaining a guy in pissing rain. I it's what worries well. me, uh, mm. especially KP, the way that he plays. In saying that, he might just run the football all day and cause fucking havoc, slip and slide through mm. tackles all day. But mm. I don't know. I, I don't love it. Um, I don't know who I'm going to VC. I might VC KP. <laughs> I'm probably going to captain Val Holmes against the Titans. I reckon he'll kick a few goals, score a few meaties. Hey, I'd be tempted to do that regardless. Same. Captain Val. Yeah. yeah. Against yeah, the I think Titans. It, Titans look terrible. Yeah, I'm just I'm always fearful of a bounce back factor. But, yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I think he, I, mate, it's, I, I, I don't even think it's a bold play. I think he's just my best option. It's not much doing. Yeah, and. I am always very wary of that bounce back as well, and he get burnt by it so often. The Titans just. Their roster doesn't even look very good all of a sudden. Like you yeah. take Tino out of it, Fafita coming back from injury, you know, Campbell back from injury, Brimo out of position. Ugh, all of a sudden it just looks gross. Yeah, it's pretty rank. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that's what I'm leaning towards. I'm pretty sure I will captain Val and I will vice captain some other human being. I've got to work out who that might be. I might even take a punt on like a KP mm. just to see what happens. What are you thinking? I'm thinking KP just because I don't really have like standout options this week. I've got, you know, obviously Sol Cleary is not around. Nico Hines, one of the go-tos, he's on the buy as well. So I'm thinking KP on Friday night. If it's as wet as predicted, I'll probably go off it. And if I do stick with him, I don't really have many VCs at the moment uh, that are genuine options. If Joey Manu is good to – if he comes into my side, he will come in. That's the other factor. The trench rain for that Doggies Roosters game on Friday. Yeah. It's not going to help Joey Manu either. So that's why I'm just reassessing uh, off the back of the weather. Um, if not that, like hammer against the Tigers, I hate to say it, but becomes a bit of an option. I don't have like, I said, great, great options for high ceiling plays this week. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's just one of those weeks, mm. I think, that you just make do. Um, now, we forgot to mention at the start of the show for the fifth week in a row by my count, but the mm. guy that topped the league was the Dolphinators, coached by Trent, scored 1,318. So send your address where you live. Please put your address in, Trent. I'm trusting you to nail this because previous is, haven't. Will not be chased up. You will not. I'll give you the hot tip. I won't be Scott Sattlering you guys, so it's on you. <laughs> so, Trent, uh, send in your address to beersandbreakevens at gmail.com. We are currently waiting on getting more footage from Steedon, so there might be a little bit of a mm. backlog there, uh, but they will be coming out to you guys soon. There might be a few weeks away, to be fair, but they are coming. Make sure you send your address. I need a screenshot of your team so we are aware. No porky pies need to be able to see your team. Um, and, yeah, Trent, send your email in. And shout out to... Jeremy, who is who coaches Haas de la Vista. Very good there. I don't Very mind nice. that. Mm. He's leading Beers and Break Evens uh, with 4,505, 12,000 people in there. Oh, uh, wow. Make sure you go and join the code, which I can't see still. Yeah, I've got we'll him, Get mate. Timmy to add it in a second. 339640. Still time to jump into that. Shout out to uh, the overall winner of round four, Wayne, coach of Dicko's Eshes. <laughs> Dicko's Eshes. That's all name? time. Very good. All right. Are we done and dusted? We're done and dusted. Here we are, mate. Red Rover. All right. We will see you tonight, 8 p.m. on The Late Show, answering all your questions in rapid fire formation.